Hi. It's been a while. You may have noticed that in the last six months I've only put up one video and that video I had to get up because I had a pre-existing contract that I had to stick to. Now I am not exactly the world's most consistent YouTuber. I was at university for three years and that meant that my uploads were few and far between because I was trying to get a degree. But I graduated in summer last year and all I kept saying on my Twitch streams was that I was really excited to give YouTube a proper go again. That obviously didn't happen and I kind of just want to talk a bit about why. I am now going to talk quite openly about mental health as well as some pretty traumatic things that happened to me in the last few months. So if this is not something that you are particularly open to hearing right now, I recommend clicking off the video or skipping to the end because I do like to end on a, on a high. Um, so when I'm done with all the sad bits, you can skip to this timestamp. <laughs> I took some time after I graduated to collect myself and kind of set into motion what I wanted to do with my channel and with my life. And I planned out about a year's worth of content. I was really excited to start creating and filming this content. Um, and then around October time, um, something really traumatic happened to me that I don't want to get into too much detail about because although this is a personal video, I don't think everything needs to be on the internet. But it was something that really damaged me um, and that I have now got PTSD from. I was unable to go to sleep Every time I tried, I would have panic attacks um, and I would be in a state of just complete terror. So I would keep myself awake uh, until the point of delusion, um, until my body actually just passed me out from exhaustion. And this is bad under normal circumstances, but it's particularly bad uh, when you have a disability called chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, where your body doesn't function well with no sleep. I then ended up getting sick from not sleeping. So then my physical health was kind of in as bad of a position as my mental health. A few weeks after this, uh, my five year relationship actually came to an end. Uh, it ended very amicably. These things sometimes just happen. They just don't work out. But me and my ex were living together and had been living together for about four years. So we had to go through the process of kind of moving out and separating all of our stuff, which is hard, even if things end well. I made the decision to move to London because I felt like that was where I needed to be. Um, I felt like that was a good place for a fresh start where I could try and heal and be closer to my friends and be more creative. At the end of November, early December, I was made aware of a company that was using clips from my content to advertise their product without my consent. This then resulted in a lengthy and expensive legal back and forth between me and this company, essentially with me just trying to get compensated for the use of the content that they took without my consent. This legal battle is still technically ongoing to this day. I moved out of Nottingham in the middle of December and I moved into my parents' house temporarily whilst I waited to find a flat in London. I did my charity streams over Christmas because every year on Twitch I do a bunch of charity streams over Christmas and things were looking up. I had my two cats, Atlas and Gaia. <laughs> um, and I was feeling optimistic. I was getting therapy. And then two days into the new year, I got into a car accident where the wheel of my car snapped off um, and the wheel went up into the door and I skidded onto the other side of the road. Thankfully, no one was hurt, um, but I was a bit shaken up and I did have to wait till two in the morning in the cold with my car for it to get towed, <laughs> which was not a pleasant experience. Four days after that, my cat Atlas got sick. He stopped eating and I didn't know why. And so I took him to the vet and the vet diagnosed him with a cold, gave him some fluids and sent him home. Two days later, Atlas still was not eating and he was hiding in dark corners of my house. Um, I took him back to the vet and she did more tests and said there was inflammation somewhere in his body. Took him to the vet hospital where they found a blockage in his intestine. I called them at half past seven in the morning to see how Alice was. 
and they said he was doing okay, but he had a slight heart murmur, which can sometimes happen, but he was fine and the morning team were gonna come in and prep him for surgery. I got a call half an hour later saying that his heart had stopped and that they wanted my permission to try and resuscitate him, which I said yes to. And then they called me back 20 minutes later to say that they got him back, but then he passed away again. And now it looks like even if they got him back, he would have brain damage. So they wanted my permission to stop trying to resuscitate him. All of that happened within the span of four days. Atlas was my first ever pet. He was my best friend. Cats are supposed to live until they're like 15. I only got three years with him. When I went to go and collect him, I was told that what actually killed Atlas was not the blockage in his intestine, but actually a buildup of fluid that had happened on his lungs. And that happened on the Tuesday of the week that I was supposed to be moving to London. Now, even though Atlas didn't make it, you still have to pay the vet bills. Um, so this ended up making me incredibly stressed about money because I had to fix my car, I had to move out, I had to move in, um, and then I also hadn't worked for the last few months because I was not really able to, either physically or mentally, and, and the thing about my job, which is both a gift and a curse, is that because it's so flexible and you work for yourself, there's a lot of freedom in terms of when you work, which means that when I was unwell, I was able to take the time away. I, I could step back and knowing that there is no sick pay, I have savings for if this happens. These incidents kind of compiled together completely diminished those savings. But I was in a mental space where I was like, if I don't move, if I don't have a, a quote unquote fresh start, I'm worried that I'm just never gonna recover because I didn't want to be somewhere where I was constantly reminded of Atlas's absence so I needed to go somewhere new. I moved to London and in lots of ways things got better. I was closer to my friends so I was seeing people more. I started streaming on Twitch again which gave me a sense of routine and purpose but then I got permanently banned on Twitch because my Twitch account got hacked and I lost all my clips of Atlas from when I was streaming and that just sent me in a bit of a spiral. Thankfully, I got my account back. Um, it did get banned again a week later because <laughs> the same thing happened, but I got it back again. So I guess I've survived two perma bans, which is <laughs> pretty impressive. Um, I'm now a Twitch partner, so I'm hoping that that means I don't get banned again, but you never know. <laughs> the place that I was in in London was only temporary accommodation for two months, which meant that I needed to find somewhere else to live. I found a place and I thought everything was good to go, uh, and then they kind of had a back and forth with me for like two and a half weeks uh, and then told me that the only way I would be able to rent the property is if I paid 12 months rent up front. So I couldn't go there, but that wasted two and a half weeks of my time. I found another place and I got outbid. I found another place and they kind of strung me along for about a week before finally telling me that they actually accepted an offer from someone else. It was all a bit mad. It essentially got to the week before I was supposed to move out and I still didn't have anywhere to live, which was awful. <laughs> and then my wonderful friend Lily sent me a link to an apartment that was actually kind of perfect. So I called them and I was viewing that property 30 minutes later and I said that I would make an offer for asking right there and then. They accepted it and I went through the whole guarantor process and it was all very speedy because this happened on the Monday and I was supposed to move in the following Monday. All the checks get done, everything is signed on the Thursday, I'm ready to move in on the Monday. That Friday, the apartment that I'm staying in starts getting a leak from the ceiling um, and water starts pouring out of the light fixtures in the bathroom. So I have to run upstairs and tell them that th something is leaking um, and they get a plumber around and the plumber ends up turning the water off for the entire building, which unfortunately I don't realize until half past five. <laughs> By which point at half past five on a Friday, no plumber is going to come back and turn the water back on. Um, so, 
I then had to spend Friday, Saturday and Sunday without any access to water, um, which is, is funny because you don't realise how much you need water until it's not available at the tap. Can't flush a toilet, can't brush your teeth, can't have a shower. And so I was like, okay, I can do this, it's fine. Saturday morning comes around, I'm packing, it's fine. I'm just showering at the gym, everything's good. And then I get a call from the letting agent of the property that I'm supposed to be moving in on Monday, who tells me that the landlord is refusing to let me move in unless I pay him another month's rent up front. Two days before I move in. At which point I just have a full blown breakdown <laughs> because I've got, I've, I've not got any water in the flat. <laughs> I'm, I've had enough. Eventually I have to argue that actually they signed the tenancy. I have met all of the uh, criteria. Like I've passed every single book background check. I've got a guarantor and all of this stuff and there's no justifiable reason to ask for that money. And eventually they kind of relent and let me move in anyway. Um, so I'm currently living in that flat. I am here, I moved in, everything is fine. Since moving into this space, I have started to feel a lot better. I have started exercising again. I have started sleeping better. I have therapy and I am getting help, <laughs> essentially. I love my job and I am so grateful that this is my job, but I was not in a position where I could be the person I needed to be in order to make good videos. And I don't want to put out videos that aren't good because I want you to enjoy them. I always say swings and roundabouts. It's like what goes up must come down and what goes down must go up. What comes around goes around, swings and roundabouts. I know that when life is really bad, like it has been ongoing for me for the last six months, um, it will get good again at some point. I just have to stick it out until that point. And I think things are getting better. I finally feel ready enough to come back to content creation, but it would mean the world if you could be patient with me in terms of upload schedules, because I still struggle on, on days, but I am also a regular person who has bills to pay. <laughs> so I've basically got to come back because of capitalism is what this video is. Um, <laughs> but it also didn't feel right to just come back to posting and start posting sponsored videos, for example. I am very open that I only accept sponsors from companies whose products I genuinely love and use. And that is still the case. In fact, I turned down an astronomical sponsorship recently purely because I was concerned about the ethics of the company involved. This sponsorship would have genuinely <laughs> uh, solved a lot of my stresses surrounding money, but I didn't want my audience to think that I valued my own personal financial security over the ethics of promoting a potentially bad company or bad product to my audience, because I don't. That being said, because I rejected that sponsorship, I have needed to accept sponsorships from other companies that I love, which is lovely, but it does mean that there might be quite a few more sponsorships than you are expecting in the next few videos, especially because these are my first few videos back. I am excited to make content again. I just felt like I needed to explain why after such a long gap, there might be sponsorships in it because I don't want people to think that the only reason I bothered coming back was because I wanted money. I'm being very transparent in the fact that I do need money because I'm a human living in a capitalist society. It's unavoidable. Um, <laughs> but that is not the only reason. I'm coming back because I feel like I need to because it's good for your soul to create, I think. And this is my outlet. This video has ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would. And I apologize for that. I just felt like I owed you guys transparency in this. I do have some videos planned for the next few months that I am genuinely really excited for um and it's been a long time since I've been genuinely excited about something so I really do hope that you will watch them um that you'll stick around <laughs> uh and and that this makes sense if you want to see my face a little more I do stream on twitch twitch.tv forward slash elbat I'm also on instagram it's Eleanor L Bateman over there I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day Thank you for your patience and your understanding and I'll see you very soon, hopefully.